going and figuring it out on your own is the first step towards becoming an entrepreneur you know that yeah because we saw that the content was the king right the way baiju taught uh, the methodology of teaching could keep auditorium spellbound yeah. so we knew that if we could take this content places we could create an education revolution we knew it we all had zero corporate experience but we had infinite passion and energy right to do something on first principles to do something which has never been done before that's what has held us together we actually didn't go by the rule book what would you typically do you'll go to mentors you'll ask them is it a good idea yeah uh, yeah because if we had actually done all the research in 2015 of you know should we launch this app should we do what we did the answer would have been a resounding no because at every step that you take uh, you can have you can have 10 people who are judging you not because of your talent and not because of the person that you are or the attributes that you bring to the table but solely because of your gender all women teaching from home from india to the world you said you, you used to play sports hmm. what sport you play the age of uh, okay so the first one i was gymnastics and running age of 4 uh, my mom used to make me run around uh, you know the the running track in jainagar fourth block in bangalore at the age of 4 age of 4 it's a good age to start you were running you're running from 2 now you're just running in circles at 4 <laughs> it's okay and then at the age of 5 i started swimming you know a lot of times i say that uh, when people say how was it in your first class you started you know you entered your first class there were 120 kids people know the story i wore a sari to look a bit uh, you know a bit older than what i was just 21 hmm. how old are you i'm 26 right now okay yeah so much older than where where i was right 21 and wearing a sari just to look older and you put in front of a class because baiju had this belief that i am a good teacher okay right and 120 kids sitting in a gallery st- mm. uh, style classroom today the best uh, analogy for me is my diving teacher throwing me off the board in the swimming pool into the depths of it right and say go figure it out mm. right so going and figuring it out on your own is the first step towards becoming an entrepreneur you know that yeah yeah 100% yeah. okay now like <clears throat> going start i want to know you better mm. so that i can ask you better questions mm. and the the idea is like you were always been a topper like you were always this kid who wanted to become topper so I, i've never been a topper mm. so no, I I, I, i'm not i'm not a kid who always wanted to be a topper so I, so i i have been in the front bench i have been in the middle rows i've been in the back seat throughout my learning journey in school right like the stopping happened i've been a good student uh, i've liked academics i've loved i've loved subjects like science and math biology was my favorite subject my dad was my first teacher and i mean i, I feel nature is a great teacher yeah. so that's that's that stays as my favorite subject even today uh, but over the years it's not that every time i was rank 1 in class right i i mean i did well in the subjects that i loved and i liked uh and in grade 10 was when i did really well in sciences and maths and in english grade 12 is when i kind of topped the college and then went on to university and then you know so where it mattered i put in efforts to top did ever happen where your mom or dad someone was like ki beta ho gaya bahut padhai badhai ab to chale jao aage no never dekh bahut padha liya tumne ha tumne bahut padha liya ab to chale jao us Mm. never ever have had this never happened and i'll tell you right see here's another thing which pulled me back i'm the only child we were mm. only daughter i've never stayed away from my parents in the entire 21 years of my life it was it would have been a very difficult decision to leave them and go also so i i wouldn't say that is the only reason but there was some nagging reason behind where i didn't want to go mm. you know and and go and i said okay eventually when i go i'll take everybody and go and even if i go right and there will be enough opportunities later to do it so yeah i stayed back but uh, very supportive right like ultimately if you look at what happened i am very fortunate to have a family that's always stood by me uh, it isn't easy for uh, for my dad who's who's a doctor who has i keep joking to him that your degrees are longer than your name and he's done he's he's and he's done mbbs md dm dnb frcp it's like crazy is so he's done so many degrees i i joke that even now you can go and take an exam right he's touching 70 and i'm waiting for him to retire uh, i'm telling him that you need to and you need to spend more time with me but to for for someone like that to understand that and someone who's you know that and at that point of time the american dream is a big dream yeah. for your kids uh, to to give up their dream uh, and invest in my hopes 
I mean, that shows uh, how much they love you, they trust you, and uh, how much they can. I mean, how far they can go to make your dreams come true. No, that's fair. That's fair. I want to sweep in a difficult question. Okay, I ask this to buy you as well. Uh, a difficult question is I ask my dad, and I want to ask you as well. Like, what is it? Because you brought up your kids and the family. What is that one thing you want your kids to learn from you, mm-hmm. and one thing you don't want your kids to learn from you? One thing I want my kids to learn from me. Because I feel kids learn from observation. Mm-hmm. and they observe your actions and they want to do things mm. right so they'll observe things which you don't even know mm. and they'll mm. do it right mm. so what do you what do you want them to observe from you and learn mm. and what is one thing that you wish they should not learn from you? okay i definitely want them to be happy like me right because for me i can find happiness in the smallest of things like a like a flower garden i can find happiness with people around me i surround myself with people i love so for me i can draw inspiration and happiness from everyone and everything that is one now what i don't want them to learn from me there's so many things yeah i can improve <laughs> myself in so many ways uh but maybe i'm very emotional like uh, i can i can go to tears like that uh so if if my son was like he was singing the national anthem in school and i was i was in tears right so i'm very <laughs> emotional now i i don't know i i hope both of them are not like that uh the elder one is actually more emotional than the i mean from whatever i can see so far the younger one seems to be more aggressive and strong <laughs> and the elder one seems to be more softer and you know emotional so yeah maybe maybe that i mean i'm not saying it's a negative quality but uh, you know i just want them to be happy all the time that i don't want them to ever Cry. Yeah, I, I yeah, it's very very utopian. It's it a very motherly like thing. Motherly, Mother love yeah. is now coming out yeah, all of a sudden. All of a sudden, like it's always <laughs> there. It just comes out. And now yeah, there, yeah. But you look very happy as a person. I think you you spread those cheerful vibes. Honestly, yeah, you feel uh, more yeah, cheerful. Very very like you. I feel you. You have that. Do you have as a just like business? You guys have different departments. Have you department like kids also? Like one, I'm gonna take care of everything, and mm. other you could take like is it like this? One is closer to one, the other is closer to one, mm. or like no, 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 not really. Actually, and and I think that's one place where it really helps that there are two of us in both the places. Mm. Uh, a lot of people say, isn't it a challenge? Your work life spills over into yeah. your personal life and your other way around. Isn't it a mess? See, and as long as you're having fun doing whatever you do. uh i mean you need to manage only if you're not having do- fun doing something right if you if you yeah. enjoy it you don't need to really manage and think of it as separate entities so we try to i mean uh, while we try to dedicate time for the kids uh, it doesn't always go as per plan but then i think it helps that you know both of us can pitch in in either places uh and uh, for both the children both of us equally mean the world to them so that's where it helps uh so i mean i won't say that quantity wise he's spends more time with the kids that would be incorrect uh, but quality wise definitely uh, both of us yeah. you know give them all the time that fair, we can fair. now getting to the business side of it now i want to know that that how many people like he he also mentioned that first 15 20 people they all were students mm. people like you mm. you all mm. were the founding members mm. so what do you think what was the reason why all of you joined was it just the passion of learning or like passion of like his passion for teaching or changing the world for better or there was something else like because there are so many people trying to create so many good like doing mm. so many things create mm. an impact mm. what was this one thing about them mm. or him like which you felt or which you feel like not you but everyone else mm. in the founding team felt the same way yeah so i i mean it's it's something that if i look back and think now i think i have a clearer answer as to why it okay. happened the way it happened right like and i will st- i will start with the first six including byju the six founding member team so we came together we had a passion for learning changing the way people learn because we knew that uh, there is a need for for especially children to unlearn what they learn today and learn in the right way so that they become a learner for life now this is very intense and very but that's i mean that's what it was in each of our minds we were all tied together by that purpose by that value now why we came together so we were all all the stories are different but common is that everybody was a student of byju right so and they and and uh, these are students like among the six of us some of us went to a premium school b school and came back and some of us you know just did not decided not to go and straight away joined right among the six but all of us were bound together by that common thread of you know we want to make 
we want to create something which has never been created before and we want to because we saw that the content was the king right the way baiju taught uh, the methodology of teaching could keep auditorium spellbound yeah. so we knew that if we could take this content places we could create an education revolution we knew it and uh, I, i mean if you ask me we all had zero corporate experience but we had infinite passion and energy right to do something on first principles to do something which has never been done before that's what has held us together it's an underrated uh, you know today if they say what is it that has worked for you the most underrated thing but the most important is the team like everybody is here even today it doesn't happen in tech startups yeah i never imagined that i will do what i am doing today because i was never a person like this i was an introvert in school i wouldn't speak up but people who see me today they would never believe that it's teaching has transformed me becoming a leader has transformed me as a person you said all of you were educators you were all teachers nobody came from a corporate background how did you learn to build a business i'm very curious about like what did you read books did you talk to mentors like Uh, where did you learn to build business it's not an easy thing to do i mean i get that there's customer obsession and you keep doing what customer has mm. but business apart from customer success there's also operations there finance there's uh, i don't know r and d mm. there's hr mm. there's administration like so many things right like yeah. how did you learn it no we we actually didn't we actually didn't go by the rule book what would you typically do you'll go to mentors you'll ask them is it a good idea yeah. Uh, yeah because if we had actually done all the research in 2015 of you know should we launch this app should we do what we did the answer would have been a resounding no if we had done the research the way we were supposed to right like okay is there a product market fit do you think this app will take off the answer would have been no you know it's almost like us uh, but but what the app did and how we launched it's almost like you know steve jobs said that you figure out what your uh, customer needs even before they know that they want it yeah it was almost like that and that's what the app did because even we were surprised by the kind of acceptance it had within the first couple of months and speaking about us as a team and you as a question right and i know i digressed i mean we only learned we just learned along the way by doing it was all practicals and no theory and i'll be very frank because where do you learn from this is something that you're building on first principles it's never been done before this is not a cut copy paste a uh, model we are not making a better version of something our competitor made right there's this no, is here yeah. nobody yes this is your own rule book your own playbook right right everything it's a blank sheet and i think that's the beauty right sometimes not knowing the rules helps yeah. you paint the way you want to paint nice so <coughs> talking about you love branding marketing talking right let me what are the like for everyone who's because most of the w- uh, viewers they are entrepreneurs yeah. or wanting to be entrepreneurs right they want to get into this game what are the three principles which you keep in mind when it's about branding hmm. or like making a brand better like for my startup if hmm. i want to do it or for anyone startup what should like what is branding like how should we think about it the first one is how do you personify it right like how do you how do you make it relatable and how do you create a personality for it now uh, create something which people can you know can visualize can can feel can relate to not something that is untouchable that's something which which they can personify that's that's what i see uh, a brand as second is create something a lot of people say you know when you're when you're a very big company uh, people won't love you Hmm. I I I I I disagree because in education you have to be loved right and what I'm creating today it can be a big company but a big company without love a big company without trust doesn't have purpose so what you're what you're building for me what we are building as an organization is something that uh, children would love parents would trust and it's an ecosystem that grows in that love and trust so that's very very important when it comes to education yeah but here's a, a question on that how do you make people love you or your brand it's such a difficult thing to do right it's not an easy thing to do mm. it's like we we all talk about get people to trust but it's so difficult but trust till you can get it like keep doing same thing over and over again and again for years mm. and then people start forming trust but how about love like how do you make people fall in love with you or your brand what do you think like what should we do 
yeah so see love is an input and trust is an output if you ask me okay, okay so love yeah so oh. for example you will love something and i'll give you an example of the app itself yeah. children love the teachers children love the videos because it's engaging it's visual they've learnt it in such a simple way that they've never learnt it before so they start falling in love with learning that's how you create love for your products for your brand how do you create trust you create trust with outcomes outcomes takes time right education is not some is not an investment where you see returns even in 6 months to 1 year you need to be patient with education but education once it gives you that result and outcome it can change lives it can change livelihoods so trust for me is all about outcomes and maybe i can give you an example of you know where and why do i say we are about outcomes and trust is if if you look at our education for all which is our social initiative 5 million children are learning from us and this is their primary mode of learning mm. and for all the children who are learning with us 75% have reported an increase in their learning outcomes and learning grades that for me is trust that for me is better outcomes this is what keeps a brand see we are not building something which will you know for next 5 years 10 years we built this for the last 15 years we're going to build it together for the next 30 to 40 at least yeah we are not serial entrepreneurs we are educators we are teachers and we are here to create we are here to create something where which will boost the entire ecosystem teachers students you know institutions and and everybody the entire community can get uplifted because of education we are aware of the segment that we are in it can create massive impact so you feel is the i love that line by the way like input and output it just because i feel like you make make people fall in love with you when you love them hmm. so you you love them so much you give them you give them value you give them love you like give them care and because you do that consistently for a long time people start that's trusting true. you in return that's true <clears throat> i want to talk about uh, i want to understand your journey if you if you're okay with it tell me hmm. you said you were and we were just talk like our conversation started in this way there are like very less female founders mm. doing a lot of mm. stuff right do you feel it's difficult as a female like a female team member or a founding member to like to be in this world and like what how is it is it different for male and female like you know how many people have asked me this question money every single interview yeah because because we want to know this right you know but my answer is very different hmm I am like I am an example of what can happen if you bring up a child irrespective of whether she is a boy or a girl if you do not look at them with the myopic lens of gender okay and then you will get someone like me where you know it and I was just like I was not at all cognizant of this whole you know boys are brought up differently girls are brought up differently I'm the only child of my parents so i was brought up i was given equal exposure to literature to sports to studies academics everything now i was brought up like a child not like a boy not like a girl mm. so that's why i don't know the challenges but i'm aware of them because i see them and i see them every day because i, I through education for all i know and and i'm very proud to say that half of the beneficiaries are girls maybe it's also because of the format right because mm. online learning you can learn from home parents don't really have a problem with that they're like okay fine it's safer for the girl than yeah. going outside and learning so it anyway asks for this whole model asks and encourages inclusion and diversity now that being said uh, is it is it tougher of course it is tougher uh, i mean uh, because this and so many people ask me like what is this glass ceiling how does it look like to you i'm like i'm we are walking on it every day no we are walking on it it's not above you but it's it's on the floor that you walk because at every step that you take Uh, you can have you can have 10 people who are judging you not because of your talent and not because of the person that you are or the attributes that you bring to the table but solely because of your gender and this is why from inception we have hired only based on talent so we have 40% women in byju's damn yeah and even and for a tech company that's really really good and also what we did is over the last 24 months we have 15000 teachers all women teaching from home from india to the world now these are women who are either underemployed unemployed but graduates the first set of people who had to give up their jobs were women to to take care of their children so this was done with a with a hope that we are able to bring them back to the workforce to contribute because they make phenomenal teachers 
and the, and this is something where it's a very respectable job highly respectable you know profession which is teaching and and that's why you know th- these are all the steps that we have taken as an organization because i i know that if if anything they can contribute equally for me nobody is better nobody is yeah. worse right it's it's purely based on merit we need to stop looking at this women leader men leader and all of that right leaders should not have a gender entrepreneurs should not have a gender that is the day you will you will be able to have a, a you know a world where leadership is based on talent that is no it's true and i i fully agree with this point that entrepreneurship should not be gender it should be it should be like a mindset and it mm. can be mindset of anything it should be inclusive mm. right talk your first principles now to you have like lot of data to look up to because you have your own learning forget the world you have your own learnings and own app only to go through and learn from right what have you noticed about indian customers which is so unique uh, which which you feel it's it's a it's an insight worth sharing i'll give you something mm. so so that it it adds up so when i was building my business and i was building a dishwasher gel company or selling dishwasher gel building distribution around the around the state right and i found out one thing that the more remote you go the villages you go to mm. people say that india is a low trust society but india is a high trust society when you go lower mm. so the the let's say if you go to tier 3 tier 4 village or like the village which has like just 10000 people 5000 people their trust is super high mm. so the trust is super high it just gets divided as you go to bigger cities mm. so metro cities mein trust will be super low and the reason the biggest reason was in metro cities people live in individualistic societies mm. in in smaller cities people live with community driven societies mm. so in a community the trust is super high mm. so if you want to sell something to in a village you need a different approach versus you sell something right so in a if you want to sell it to a smaller city you need higher emotions mm. if you sell it to a metro city you need higher education mm. so it's like just like this this was very wild for me mm. i thought india same har jagah same hai but just just the population of one space mm. can change your entire marketing technique mm. and that's what i learned mm. so that's what like it came from business so mm. ha- have you ever seen like some insight like that like that this something about indians the value for education is something that i've seen as a common trend whether you're in tier 1 tier 2 tier 3 the aspiration the importance the value which is given to education is very similar but in 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 tier 3 towns it is the only way to make it big hmm in in tier 1 because there's already a cushion there is already a there is more room to experiment there is more room to to go for you know more the skills which are more futuristic right but this thread of education is important is there throughout so while maybe in everyone for example will see see sees a dream of their children going to an iit or an iim whichever part of the uh, you know whichever whichever part they are growing up from in deeper towns or in deeper parts of the country uh, for us over there most of our sales is by word of mouth so and overall 40% of our sales is very organic mm. it is through word of mouth where one person relays uh you know their good experience to another one and say you know you go for it and that's the best way if you ask me this is how it should be uh so if you ask me this value which is attributed to education that is the that is the common thing which we've seen throughout the surprisingly no change the importance given to stem subjects there is no change you look at a tier 1 city versus a tier 3 city there's absolutely uh you know you know no change at all okay he going back to the we started with a love conversation i want to go to the hate conversation as mm-hmm. well okay i want to understand your perspective of uh, because you're a large organization there are going to be phases where people love you there are going to be phases where people hate you and it goes on every time this is with every startup mm-hmm. around the world mark zuckerberg goes through the same thing uh, like even like a small person like someone as small as me we go through the same thing everybody mm-hmm. goes through the same space right mm-hmm. so do you does it affect you ever you might have heard this and you know this nothing is as good as what you see right on media and nothing is as bad as what you hear on social it's hmm. life is also somewhere in between like that right so if you if you learn to deal with everything with neutrality uh, and if you just consistently keep going at it, it you won't let it affect you because there will be highs there will be lows yeah so for every company like you rightly said is there for every organization like you said but if you know your intent is li- right if you know that your mission is long term it should not affect you because mm. if you if you start getting affected by 
you know what anybody keeps throwing at you you can lose focus there is no room for losing losing focus today you have 50000 people and their families who depend on you you have 7.5 million students who depend on you then 150 million learners across the world learning from us there are 5 million children learning for free these are big responsibilities so uh, it's see and and it's not that we don't do our research on you know where we are headed there are mistakes that we've made as we've grown up as an organization which is part of any company that is growing based on first principles which i love to use the word where they're learning to do things right or l- wrong they're learning for the first time but it's important that we take those measures to correct it when it's a small mistake so that it doesn't balloon up yeah. right to put processes in place as and when it's required and we've done that along the way there is criticism which is fair uh which which is just which we should take and which we should act upon but there are times where it's unjust and undeserved which i think it's best to just look beyond mm. right it's 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 something that everybody faces negativity just spreads faster than uh, positivity like if there was one thing which had gone wrong but there were the 100 things that have gone right nobody really wants to know about the 100 things which went right now yeah, so m- more than that i feel ne- more than spreading it's like nobody does anything about positivity but for negativity people spread it out hmm. okay let's go ahead again talk about little more about your your business your nature yeah okay and i wanted to ask this question that that time when you said i'm a big learner from nature what is the one thing you've learned about business from nature what about nature that you love the most like what's the one philosophy or something that you feel like this is the thing of built my Yeah so if you ask like if you look at the weather right it can rain it can it can be sunny it can be hot it can be windy uh not every weather condition is comfortable but there is joy in every weather weather condition business is also like that right nice. and uh if you you and there is something to learn in every weather condition and sometimes you will have to work hard and get out of it and sometimes you will enjoy it and just 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 bathe in the warmth of it <laughs> but what's next for you the last couple of questions and hmm. for next for you I'll walk I'll let you walk free <laughs> but what's next for what's next for you what's next for me next for me is to immediately is to do what I'm doing today better tomorrow anything all aspects personally professionally long term it is very very clear mission right like whatever we are building today Uh, and whenever we've built something we've always built something which is global localized to every country personalized to every student we built it in such a way so that we can scale it now can we do that better uh, can we do that by having more and more companies so there is always this organic growth versus inorganic growth right so inorganic growth is where you acquire companies to be part of your journey then there is the organic build where with our team we build so we have research da- labs all over the world so can we do more can we add more value for the student because see valuations will come and go but values are forever and the value you create is forever right so every day can we add more value to the life of the students that we touch uh, for uh, for like can we create something which can maybe deepen their learning or broaden their understanding so are we building something for that so i want to do that better uh five years from now 10 years from now implement the latest technologies make learning as innovative as ca- it can get revolutionize it mission is same ask me this question 10 years back ask me that today ask me 10 years from now answer will be unchanged uh, we want to make students love learning so that they become learners for life that's it simple mission it will not change but how do we do it the paths can be different so be very we are very fixed on our mission but very flexible with the way we execute so what's next for us is whatever we are doing today do it better be stronger uh, faster uh, uh, maybe bigger uh, but also something which which can create more and more impact well, you came prepared for this answer really you you knew what you have to say no i it's don't so think good so. like no it's, uh, it's a compliment now you go back and see my videos and see whether i've answered this question before No, I'm just saying, like it's a compliment. Okay. That, okay. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks a lot for doing this. I know you're super busy. Yeah. And taking your time to do this, I really loved it. I hope that we get to round two as well and soon. Yes. And then we do this more often. Yes. Thank you so much. Thank you so much.